All right. Welcome back to comedy. Comedy or worse. No, is that you? Is that me? Or, or worse. worse. I've never been interrupted. That's a special treat for you. I, viewers at home. Sorry, I was too excited. Oh, I love it. Um, I'm here with a very special guest. Marissa Pape. Yay. Yay. I love it when they know what to do when I point at them. All right. So welcome to the podcast. How are Thank you doing today? Happy to be here. Uh, I'm great. It's a little warm. Uh, it's Comic-Con weekend in San Diego, so parking is prime real estate. Yeah. So that's been a, that was a treat. Not really. But I do, actually, I do love coming down to downtown during Comic-Con because I could just, I look at everyone's dedication to comics and movies and TV shows and all of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. See the cool cosplay and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so do you use a stage name at all? Nope, just here. Um, so my last name, it's it's French, Pape. Okay. Um, so a lot of times um, hosts and other people don't, um, they don't ask me how to pronounce it. So it gets mispronounced a lot, um, which I do have a bit where, you know, poke fun at the fact that it wasn't pronounced correctly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not offended anymore. I used to get offended, but by the time I was in college, I just kind of, gave up on correcting people um so it's a hit or a miss uh, some people could probably look at that as a stage name though if i don't correct people but sure. one day yeah definitely cool uh, so how did you get into comedy oh well um I w- my parents have always said i've had some pretty quality one-liners um mm. and i i not to sound vain, I do see myself as a funny person. I think my sense sure. of humor is a good like attribute that I have. Yeah. So, um, and I had, I you know, did have the couple friends. You should do stand up, and I knew nothing about it other than enjoying watching stand up and you know thinking of my own personal stories. Going, yeah, I could totally, I could write something about that, and yeah. um, being a dork and kind of like making up my own sets in the car while I'm driving somewhere. Nice. Um, and then I actually started first in improv comedy. Um, okay. My sister was doing that, and she's a natural at that. So then that turned into, well, if I'm doing it, you should do it, because we've done huh. everything together growing up. We did uh-huh. sports together, Girl Scouts. It just, nice. So then it was improv so comedy. Was she older or younger? She is older. She's two years older. Oh, okay. Um, so then she got me into that, and then from there, um, a couple friends that I had met through the improv community here in San Diego said, hey, we're going to do stand-up. Um, so that's, uh, we took a class, to, we all took a class together with Jennifer Mason. Shout out, Jennifer. Is that at the Comedy Palace? No, it was actually at Finest City Improv in San Diego. Oh, right. Um, no, 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 it's okay. So I just feel like I meant you at Comedy Palace first, but I don't know. Actually, no. I've never been to Comedy Palace yet. Oh. It's on my, it's on my list. But here, I met you here, oh. um, at you know all the open mics here at Madhouse. Um, oh, cool. So yeah, and then I just I fell in love with it, and it just kind of that reassurance um, of having people, and you know just knowing that like I'm not crazy. This is actually funny, and um, yeah. yeah, there's there's some selfish, you know gratification when a stranger does come up to you after a show it's like that was so funny like, yes i yes. did <laughs> good so then you know you you do end up chasing that dragon of like i want people to tell me i'm good all the time yeah. so yeah, yeah. Cool. It's, and that's where we're at nice have you had so you have that funny like funny or uh, great uh fan interaction stories or not really i mean uh, like i i'm happy with any any stranger any person coming up to me and just being like you're really funny or i really enjoyed when you talked about this um because again it just helps me hone in as a a comic to um you know this is what i want to talk about this is what i want to write about um because i have i have plenty of things that have happened in my life and i will say with stand-up and writing things um i can kind of instead of seeing the negative i now see the like that's going to be funny. That's going to be a bit in like 30 minutes. Wait till I get home, you know. 
let's say someone yelled at me or, you know, some person just being a jerk. And then I can go home, sit there and be like, okay, I can turn this into something. So then I'm just using their, this person's anger, frustration and turn it into a joke at their expense. Maybe I'll never see them again, but yeah. it's, it's a stress reliever therapy, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, comedy is a great way to deal with light. Oh, always. Uh, I mean, there's, I don't know if there's been studies, but I do know a lot of, at least a lot of comics I talk to, oh, we're crazy. all going through mental health things. Yeah, uh, anecdotal evidence. Exactly. So it's, uh, it is. And I think, at least for me personally, I don't want people to feel like if I get sad, I don't want someone else to feel that way because I don't like feeling sad. Right. So the way I combat that is through comedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, so did you get addicted to improv and then comedy right away? or? Yes. Oh, yes. I mean, that is uh, on dates whenever they happen uh you know it's a lot of well what do you like to watch i love watching comedy i love watching anything that'll just make me laugh um i mean but performing improv improv. oh yeah so that's that's because i enjoyed watching it so much it's one of those you know i want to do that how do i do that uh so the easy you know improv comedy was first and then with improv came stand-up um though i think my interest, I would say it was reversed. I had more interest in stand-up than improv. Okay. But I started doing improv first uh, and then got into stand-up. I but I love, both of them have their pros and cons. Sure. So but at the end of the day, I just, I like making people laugh. Yeah. Talk more about your writing process for comedy because you started to. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is, I know, um, well, Judy Carter has a book. Um, uh, the new comedy bible so that was what I was first introduced to and that kind of helped like, that was more of like a formal process of yeah. how how to write a joke whether you do you know rules of three or you know step back and just the technical aspects for it um, but I, I am definitely more of a um, not visual but I just I like to tinker with things it, and then I learn how to figure it out. I, I am that person that will throw away the IKEA instructions, get really frustrated because I can't build the cabinet, and then I'll figure it out. And um, yeah, I could have saved probably three days if I just kept the instructions, but I, it's not how I learn. Um, so anyway, so so there are times where I'll sit there, kind of jot down like things that I think are funny, whether it's my own personal situations or just general just like anything in the world it's like yeah. well, that's that's interesting and how how can i spin this though that i think other people will find it funny um <laughs> the biggest one for me though is definitely it, it's almost like an instant yeah you know, um let me give an example uh, an example a bit i'm working on is is pretty much how i was i was i was dumped recently i was dating someone and he ended things and he was so nice and just very like not sad which like (laughs) i was i was a little hurt because i was like okay i thought this was a little more serious than that and this guy pretty much tried to laugh it off if you will of just like yeah we're not i don't want to do this anymore i was like oh cool thanks dude like you couldn't like fake being nice or sad like that's that's fine so anyway so in the moment i was just very i was very you know i was upset like anyone's gonna be um and then just I had that lightning bolt strike of like, this could be a bit right here. Yes. And so currently what I've been workshopping is just like me wanting the guy or whoever to lie to me. Yes. Yeah, and that's, Not you know, no one that. wants to be lied to. But I'm like, no, 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 I'm breaking up. I want to be lied to. And then just like building it from there. Yeah, no one wants to. I think it's, uh, there's different levels of lies, right? Yes. There's white lies and you know and yeah you have to tell everybody all everything yeah like i'm I, not maybe you can tell them later on or something yeah sure if you're friends but like yeah. again it's just one of those for me i'm just yeah. like, like all right cool be helpful no no but it's not the most uh you know sincere feelings when they call you and they're like oh yeah i've been drinking today by the way um i'm seeing someone else and um we're done <laughs> wow 
<laughs> yeah, wow. So they were they were honest. They, they were, were very honest cheating. and they were very genuine. So they were already cheating on you? Um you're, you're I and that one, you know what? That's uh don't even wanna open that can. Right, yeah, you don't know they were just interested. Exactly. Or and then or been seen. Cause that is well not to get off topic of comedy, but like dating today, a lot of people just like have their hands in multiple bowls. You know, they're they're trying it's almost like a competition. You gotta like weed out, you know, whoever you have. And I sure. that's a lot of work. That's that makes me tired. Like I'm just I'm a one trick pony, man. I just I like the one person. Um and then but I have, you know, dated people and they're like, Oh yeah, I'm seeing like two, three other people. I'm like how is your bank? How are you not broke? First of all, like that's got to be expensive. Yeah, uh, I just schedule it. exactly. It's like how do you have time for all this? Like I again, I barely have time for me. Like, yeah. and then try to introduce someone else into my own schedule is for again for me. These are my experiences. I'm not speaking sure. for the entire dating realm of possibilities. So, yeah. but what about you? Like how how would you say you do your writing? Uh, well, that's a funny thing. You said, what did you say? I'll give you an example, a real example. You said, I've never been introduced to a book. So I don't know, you, mm. I, was, I was a little mm -hmm. distracted. So mm -hmm. I put, I've, been, I've never been in, introduced to a book. Does it say, does it say hi back? <laughs> So uh, I just get inspired, yeah, randomly, mm -hmm. and then I just have to write it down. So, yeah. So I apologize for being a little distracted. Little no, bad. that's okay. Hey, that when it hit, when it hits, it hits, it hits. I've been, you know, sleeping, and then something will come to mind, and I write it, and it will make no sense. Like yeah. I will give you, I, because again, I just I have a list. My f one example. Well, I have I have two, but the one I'm thinking of is. Being polite to someone who doesn't do clubs. Can't really tell you what I was thinking in that moment. I'm hoping maybe another they only sleep. Do, like diamonds and spades. I. It could be cards. Hearts. Could be you know dance clubs. Could be book clubs. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just one of those. I'm hoping that when come I yeah exactly I'm hoping another good sleep or poor sleep and it'll come <laughs> back and I'll write the notes and just the brain will make those connections yeah. Um, yeah that's again I, I do agree with just having you think of something and you just, you just whoop, let me look at that let me come back to that because I mean again right there that was great it's quality right there gotta love those puns yeah absolutely mm -hmm. they're, they're never ending mm -hmm. Um, so, have you like traveled for comedy? Mm, for so, you know, not stand up. I would say oh, I love performing. I um, not stand up. I've only been doing stand up on little break, a uh, little over a year now. Um, but for improv, I've gone up and I've taken a couple classes in LA and I've done a show. Oh. Actually, my um, I should say I have improv, I have stand up, and then I have clown. That's my third little fun fact about me, comedy-wise. Um, and uh, not your traditional clown of like making balloon animals and the baggy pants. It's a little more, right. it's improvised clown. Okay. Um, with, there are some structured bits, sometimes it's improvised. Um, but it's really just an opportunity to be silly. It's that healing inner child. Nice. Um, because I'll tell you, if I had a conversation with my inner child and was like, hey man, when you're 30, you're going to find out you want to be a clown and you're going to do it. And then you're going to go to LA where there's this man, Chad Damiani, who will pretty much beat you down verbally. Uh, but it works. It works. Aaron's face right now is just like, That's what trauma have I been through? And yeah. Uh, it, it's one of those, it's just like, yeah, from someone else's perspective you're like it's not fun but it it did make me better his methods work oh, okay. um so. an example is he told someone that um oh what did he say something along the lines of like covid should have killed him because that was a terrible show or you know just those 
um, not kind lines, but it's that it's that dynamic of Chad the clown boss acting ruthless, and then there's the students. There's the other kind of subordinate clowns, and that we get the opportunity to fight back to show that we're we're actually good. Um, okay. And they like a roast or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. It's like a roast. Um, Except you don't get to roast back as the other clown with Chad. You just do have to take it up. But actions, your actions will speak for themselves. And when the audience cheers for you, you know you've done right and you did it well. So are you doing that during the show? Yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's intense. Um, San Diego clown's a little different. It's a little more, I think, lighthearted, less, um, uh, yeah, intense. But um, I again, it's one of those... I hate that it works, but I love it. I I would do it again. I probably will do it again. I've signed up for a few of Chad's classes, um, but I am a homegrown San Diego clown, where I have Tommy to thank. Uh, and again, Tommy Tommy uh, Galan has New York clown experience, improv experience. Um, yeah, it's just a very freeing. It helps you being comfortable with failing, and as a baby comic you're gonna fail a lot <laughs> so sometimes just being comfortable with that silence when a joke doesn't hit you know you're just like okay noted that sucked let's move on so you're preparing stuff ahead of time or you're just trying to improvise, improvise it or? it's a combination depending on what it is there are some shows that are fully improvised and there's other shows where we have a structured bit um an example was in December last year, my sister and I, again, she's also a clown, uh, we did a dance number, if you will, to um, the song from, I think it's White Christmas with Dean Martin. Uh, it's called Sisters. So it's at least two sisters that have an act. Um, so we recreated that to the best of our ability as clowns. So we had kind of a, a straight clown that was very you know elegant and they knew what they were doing and very structured choreography and then you had the other clown that just kind of you know forgot their props just kind of like a little like scatterbrain like oh no we're doing this now and you know it's just that you know it's that play of you so know the clowns were in clown makeup, makeup and sometimes yeah okay. I will say for that show I had more makeup on than my normal and sometimes you know some of us do do the grease paint, you know? We're all clowned up. Um, the bare minimum, at least in San Diego, is we all have our noses that we wear. Um, you know, just gives you a mask, if you will. And it's something, you know, when you have the nose on, you just get a, you get to be your clown self, your clown personality. Sure. And then when that nose comes off, you're back to regularly scheduled programming. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, have you ever done like a character on a comedy stage? Just. Um. Yeah, I I do. So I have I have a bit where I talk about uh, not a full blown character like where I am that character for you know my set, but when I do my act out my act out, um, I act out my family members. Um, whether or not they're realistic, I couldn't tell you. And they couldn't tell you either because they're dead. Um, so I have <laughs> I have that advantage with me. Um, but yeah, that is it's. Um, I mean, so I think of. It, oh, go ahead. Is it just your parents are dead? Or? No, it's no, no, no. My grand grandparents. Uh, Only characters is grandparents. But I think of someone like like Robin Williams, who like phenomenal, just like can pull out those characters, and I. I, I can't think that fast yet, because um, I would well, love, I mean, yeah. I got to remind myself and everybody that like some of that is just drugs. True. So that's if true. You're on cocaine, but you're like quick. I yeah, can, you I, can I, think. I I couldn't tell you. Never done coke. No, no, so either, yeah, that's a okay. That makes me feel a little better. It makes me think he's not God. Just Robin Williams. But either way, I mean, again, that's... I don't know who else. Like, Jim Carrey's usually another character person. Yeah. 
I tend to see the best in people, so I try to not assume, unless they're like blatantly talking about or using drugs, I just assume everybody's clean and has never touched a drop of liquor in their lives. Sure. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, so, do you wish you started comedy earlier? Yes and no. Um, earlier, just to have, could have increased knowledge, maybe be doing more now. But also no, because I've had, you know, I've had certain life experiences without comedy. So now having, you know, it kind of sat like made me a better person for not doing it. Um, or at least I think I'm a better person. Um, so it's a, it's a toss up. Like, yeah, but also no, I'm happy how I ended up there. Because that's, um, again, I think where I was in life i can think of the the times i think i was in college when my friends started first telling me you should do stand-up but i know my personality in college is very different to what my personality is now um i mean i i think in my the myers-briggs test uh, i was introverted something 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 uh and then after college after working um service industry jobs that changed. So I was from when I graduated to when I started um, comedy. I mean, I went introverted to extroverted, and I couldn't believe that I was actually extroverted. Um, well, I mean, I mean, also there's humans like to categorize things. Mm -hmm. You know, these things are, you know, it's, and also like, there's like introverted slash extroverted. Yeah, extroverted, you know, introvert, blah blah blah. You know, we're like you can be. Ex Extroverted, mm -hmm. but then you need time by yourself to recharge. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, again, um, and I think if I was more introverted and I started comedy, I just don't think I would have done well. Because <laughs> uh, there is, I mean, there's a lot of you got to talk to producers, you got to talk to other comics, and you know, make the connections. And if you're not willing to make those connections, comedy is kind of lonely. Um, yeah. Yeah, you could have your jokes, but like, if you don't have the friends to talk about them or like pu help you punch up your jokes, it's uh, it's kind of sad. Yeah. Well, I have a comedy writing workshop on Saturdays um, in PB. Oh, okay. So Sign me up. Three to five. Oh, it's that's a good time. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I'll. Uh, it's it's on Facebook. It's on Meetup. It's uh, okay. Are, are you part of? Are you, are you, on Facebook. I am on Facebook, yes. Um, Have you joined San Diego Comedy Live? I think I just joined after the show that you had on Thursday nice. at Quantum. And then I saw that you had that page, so I joined that page. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah, the sad part was no one showed up for that. So. Well, that, oh, that was sad. Well, whatever, it's fine. I do it every week, so if someone doesn't show up, I get to go. Yeah, early. there you go. <laughs> Elliot, see, you, you find the bright side in things in comedy. Yeah, either way, if someone shows up, we get to do the workshop yeah. together. If they don't, then I don't just sit there for two Sad. hours. <laughs> Nobody's coming. <laughs> I wait half an hour and then that's it. Oh, you're nice. I had um in high school, I played water polo, and we always had this 15-minute uh, rule. The coach didn't show up in 15 minutes. Practice was canceled. Now, I don't know whether or not the coach knew that was a rule, um, but we had we had days where we were so close. Um, I think maybe maybe one day. And, I mean, this was before it was okay to, like, text the team, or, like, even before texting was a thing. Like, he just either he showed up or didn't show up. Um, so, yeah, I think we had one practice where we all were just like, he didn't show up. And... <laughs> That's, that's team building right there, waiting for your, your coach, your leader to, to not show up. That's That's got to say something. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, so what are your goals in comedy right now? Uh, well, yeah, just, I want to I wanna make people laugh. I know that's a pretty simple goal. Um, I would love to do more, more booked shows, um, but I know, again, it's just all about doing your time. And, um, How much time do you have right now? Set wise, or yeah, like what's the longest set you think you could have? Oh, easily um, 
I I know I have a tight five, um, and I can. I think with kind of being here for about a year, I think my type five, I could easily make that into 10. Um, Cause there is some, you know, you write stuff, you fall in love with this stuff. And then you're kind of like, well, let me, let me sit on this for a while. And then you write something new and, sure. um, but yeah, I would say I'm, I'm close to 10 minutes, but there are, I uh, like, I feel for me, I feel like the next stage, if you will, is like kind of hitting some open mics, like a uh, comedy store, uh, Laugh Factory. I don't, I don't know. For me, maybe because it's downtown, I feel like There's it's no open mic at the Laugh Factory. Oh, no, just kidding. Well, there was once upon a time. So just a comedy store then. Um, but Wait, it we're just open mics in San, uh, Los Angeles. That is another like that would be my next next next. So like I want to do what I think are bigger, which. To me, is the comedy store just because comedy store are so well known? Right, but it's a very long process there. Yeah. So you might as well start now. Well, so, exactly. So that's my next like. So you just. Well, it's, I haven't started. You know, I need to start. Well, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not telling you you have to start. Yeah. Like, I'm just. You just email. Yeah. On Fridays, mm-hmm. and then on Mondays they tell you if you got the spot or not. Mm-hmm. So I just set gone up twice and I just like make an email mm-hmm. and I have it on a schedule mm-hmm. it's like a time window okay it sends it automatically and then you know it also cc's me mm-hmm. to remind me hey yeah. you sent an email nice um and then on Monday you just have to, you know on Mondays you have to like check your email yeah you know, unless you're already in LA because like if you go two hours without looking at your emails mm-hmm. Now you gotta drive to LA. And you're yeah. Be late, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what. I think it's my own. I feel like I want to be better, but I know. Again, I just talked about being comfortable with failing and this and that. So I think I just need to. You know, what, that's gonna be my goal. It's the twenty seventh. It's gonna be my goal next week. Is I'm gonna put in for comedy store <laughs> open mics. A couple days. Yeah. Yep. Might as well. If I don't do it, I'll never do it. So. This is, and it's it's here in podcast form. So yeah. if I don't do it, I'll have past self to shame. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Um, so what is your favorite place to do comedy right now? Hmm. Well, obviously, so I have my improv comedy and my clown comedy. Um, and that's at Finest City Improv in Hillcrest. Okay. Um, and then... Favorite place to do comedy. I actually really like that Quantum place. Um, nice. That where you've had your shows. Um, it's kind of uh, there's plenty of parking. That's my <laughs> threshold for a place. Okay. Granted, I dealt with Mad. I deal with Madhouse. Um, there is a parking lot structure over there, and at least I have a job, so I can afford parking. Um, Tell me, paid thirty dollars to park there. Uh, I will neither confirm nor deny. I was shopping for parking for a while. It's Comic Con. Oh, it's Comic Con. No, don't feel bad. Uh, I am gonna try to go okay. people watch after this. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna make, make that work. thirty dollars. Exactly. We're gonna make thirty dollars worth it. Yeah. Um, where else? And I actually the little brick room here, Madhouse Comedy. It, it just has bring a soft. It back. Yeah, bring, bring it, it back. back. It has such a soft. Just because this was actually where I did my first open mic, oh, nice. um, so it does have that little like soft spot for me. Yeah. Um, what else? Actually, you know what's a really fun place? Um, there's this bar in Claremont called Peter D's. Okay. It's a little dive bar. It has, a, it has an open mic. It has an open mic on I think Monday nights. Okay. It's it's relatively new, I believe. Um, yeah. This kid named, he's not really a kid. I call him a kid because he's younger than me, but this kid named Austin has worked with um, whoever kind of runs their entertainment. And it's like this combo, it's karaoke and stand up. Uh, so there are, you know, some comics go in there and it's kind of untimed. You do what you want to do. Um, but I love, love the vibe in there. And it's a nice, it's a stage too. So you're like above the crowd. Oh, yeah. So it gives you that nice feeling so they, of like they, they've had an audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have they have some pretty strong regulars for a Monday night, um, and then even as comics, I think when last time I was there, maybe five or six came, and 
shoot, it's a, just, you know. I, I think what I like about it is that it is like a stage stage. Yeah. Um, and then like if you're feeling spicy and you want to sing karaoke too, you don't have to do your bits for the night. You can just go sing a song and you get your stage time and it's great. Nice. It's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you talked about your sister, but what was your like family like growing up? Very typical middle class uh, suburban. Nothing, uh, no, you know, came out of the trenches and blah, blah, blah. Like, no, I had a very, uh, I'd like to think normal. Um, part of the comedy I talk about is being raised half Mexican. Um, well, not raised half, I am half Mexican and half white. Um, so a lot of the family traditions are, you know, of Mexican culture. Um, so we do talk about, you know, just those differences between Mexican people and white people. Um, and again, no one actually taking me seriously as a Mexican person. And I don't help myself because I dye my hair not hmm. normal colors. Um, I sound, again, not, you know, I don't have an accent, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't, I didn't grow up in Compton. Do you speak other languages? Or? Uh, I speak, I speak Spanish. I know enough, I, I don't call myself fluent because I do st struggle with, um, Contagations of certain words, but I can definitely get myself out of jail or stay out of jail um, And I can understand I can understand a lot. So if there's people talking smack or just gossiping I can I'll, I'll, I'll listen Come on anybody else that knows another language. They do the same thing uh, And I've uh, I've been attempting to learn French to just connect with the French side um, It's not going well <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's it's another it's like it's a foreign language or something um but i do struggle just because i have that spanish and i know spanish is supposed to be the foundation for, latin is the foundation of all the languages but i have been told that spanish is supposed to help you learn uh french german and italian italian makes sense because there are some similarities um but the French, uh, just, uh, I'm trying, okay? I'm trying. <laughs> um, and that actually, because I have watched, uh, I mean, I've watched comedians, uh, obviously, Spanish-speaking comedians, or even, even French-speaking. I don't know why they pop up on my feed. But there is just, you know, sometimes just the way things are pronounced um, and the, like, because, you know, there's a thing with, like, depending on your syllables, you know, it's funnier to say 37 versus three, depending on what you're talking about. It's just, again, it's all part of the book uh, or books. There's so many books out there. Um, and it is I completely lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> so excited talking about numbers. Language. Um, I think it would be really cool if I was fluent enough to be able to do stand up in another language like Spanish would be the one I would yeah. ideally succeed in because I know that language a little better um, so yeah cool. I'm sorry if I just went so far no, left field podcast. I just feel like I just ranted just <laughs> in people we're deep diving so speaking of which what, mm -hmm. what's your earliest memory comedy memory or just normal right, childhood Uh, okay. Um, well, earliest memory. Uh, I have to. I have to give a little background to my memory. Um, so apparently, when I was born, because I don't remember that. Oh. When I was born, uh, my leg was like twisted in. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, and like I had some like hip dysplasia, something. So to remedy that without surgery, I had these little white shoes and it was these white shoes and there was a metal bar across the white shoes because it was supposed to like keep my legs straight. And so my parents would put me in those when I would sleep because obviously you can't walk in some shoes that have a giant metal bar in the middle. Mm -hmm. So 
this is a memory. I must have been maybe three, maybe even two. But I remember waking up one morning in, in a crib. And I wanted to get out of the crib. But shoes. So I was able to stand up in the crib. And I just remember screaming for my mother. And I would like to think it wasn't like bloody murder screaming. Just mama normal toddler screaming uh and then i remember my mom rushing rushing in just like what is it what is it what is it and then i was just looking at her and i'm like i want out <laughs> and she just and i remember the face after that was just like oh my god it's like yeah no yeah i want out um so that i like to think there's a little comedy in it. i mean you laughed at it so that's like or was it the middle of the night or no, no, it, it was morning. It was morning. Uh, um, I was, yeah, I was, I was a kind toddler. I was not screaming at two o'clock in the morning to get out of the bed. I guess somehow I missed that. Or you, oh, it's okay. I, I, I didn't specify the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those white shoes. I I could probably write a bit about the white shoes. I just haven't haven't unlocked that yet. But that is those white shoes. <laughs> those are my mom tells me that when my grandma was alive, um, she would almost start crying when she'd see me in these shoes <laughs> because they looked like a torture device. Um, so yeah, it's just, <laughs> there's something about this. I don't even know, I really hope my parents kept them, if they even kept them, like, cause I would love, I'm sorry, I'd love to see those. Like, cause I can remember them and I just remember they're white and just silver bar, but I would love like, not that I'm going to put my own, if I have kids, I'm not going to put my own kid in it. Because that is a form of torture. But it did help. My leg my leg is straight enough. So doctors knew something in the 90s, I guess. No. Um, yeah. That was just the earliest memory. The damn sure. white shoes. What about you? What's your earliest memory? Uh, I woke up this morning. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I don't remember that one right now. Let's see. Uh, I so in memory is interesting because like if someone takes a photo, mm -hmm. then you it's like are you putting it, you know like say that there's a photo of me like really little mm -hmm. pushing a little you know uh, toy car around mm -hmm. and I remember that and. I think it's partially because there was a photo, and it, and I probably saw the photo after it was developed. It's kind of that, like, you know what I mean? yeah, like so manipulated. It helps not uh -huh. walk that in. There's there's studies on that. Not that I'm a science like, yeah. but I, I believe that too, because um, I can definitely think of other photo, you know, photos that my parents took, or you, like nowadays Facebook, looking at those photos, and I can. It definitely it jogs a memory of like I remember we were at this park and we were you know hanging out with friends or you know just just the things like that or this dress I'm wearing was so uncomfortable and like I remember fighting with my friend that day but we smiled for this picture um, so little things yeah and then there's other like we lived in this trailer park but it was like all like wooded woodsy you know, like uh, like the trailer, okay. Like uh, it's like I think it was in, in Guerneville or something. Wow. And I was pretty young, but it's just so different than like the other places that we ended up. Mm -hmm. like, you know, it was it was a fun place to. That sounds to, nice. To live, yeah. You know, as a child. Mm -hmm. But but we had to like walk places. You know. First world problem. That's not a first world problem. That's an all world problem. Yeah. It's an all world problem having to walk somewhere. Yeah, yeah you know, when, when the car wasn't there, we could just walk. Hey, there was. I walked to elementary school and middle school. Um, that was just how, you know, yeah. how life was. There's nothing, nothing wrong with it. I remember being jealous of the kids who, like, their parents took them to school every day. And it's like, I'm sorry, my parents have jobs and you know it's like okay guess we're walking um but so where did you grow up i grew up in um san diego little tiny not tiny uh it's a town called poway it's up in north county 
Um, we have a rodeo. It's kind of I love I love Poway because I feel like it's such a unique combination of you have some very wealthy people in Poway, and then you also have like it almost has that vibe. At least growing up, it had this vibe. Now there's a little more um, building up of the city, which I'm ha- like, it's great to see the city grow, but I do miss the nostalgic. Like we used to have a bowling alley down the street, yeah. um, and um, sorry, uh, agriculture. There's like we have horses, and we do a rodeo every year, and it's just so funny to kind of just see the kind of the two differences. Um, because, yeah, you just have really, really nice part of Poway, and then you have everybody else in Poway. Sure. Um, but, I, hey, I, I love it. Um, I think growing up, from what I remember, there was only, like, two bars in town. So it's a hard place to get in trouble, is what I would say. Um, but, yeah, I always, and this is a sad thing, I was, like, when I was getting older, on my adult bucket list, if you will, I really wanted to go to the bar that was inside this bowling alley. It just was one of those like, when I turn 21, I'm gonna get my first drink there. Never did. Uh, And then they demolished the bowling alley, so there goes that. Um, But yeah, I just had this nostalgia, I just, you know, just like quiet times. And I I always had people, and maybe it was just my social circles, but um, in college, I remember people telling me, like, oh, yeah, we used to drink, like, you know, blah, blah, in high school, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, God, no. Like, are you kidding me? The, we were getting crazy by drinking Diet Coke at 10 p.m. and eating Costco pizza. Like, ooh, snap. And then hearing just all the other nonsense other people have gone into in high school. It's like, wow, we just. And again, it could be my social circle. could have been the social circle I grew up in. Um could just be just that's how the town was but it just is it's hard to get in trouble is what i would say yeah yeah we never were invited to the parties like oh no we didn't have like trailer park parties i don't know if that's a thing uh no i grew up in santa rosa that's a beautiful area rains too much that's why it's beautiful yeah that's true but you guys have all the like there's wineries and breweries more wineries, wine, good wine up there. Ten out of ten. Petaluma is really nice too. Yeah, I used to uh, visit my grandmother uh, in Petaluma. Fun. Yeah, like, uh, you know, spend the summer, part of the summer. Love that. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been up there a few times. I had two cousins go to Sonoma State, and I was thinking about going to Sonoma State. And it's cool. I went there. For yeah, no, it's, I mean, the tour seemed nice, and it was a nice, Roner Park's nice. Um, yeah. I just didn't want to have to pay to, basically, I just pay a lot of money to live up there. It's housing. Um, and then my parents were only pushing me to go there so they could go to the wine countries and stuff. Just kidding. They did not do that. I love you, Mom and Dad. <laughs> but they would go and visit my cousins to also enjoy the wineries. Um which is fine. I mean, it's up there. You're allowed to do that. They're over 21, hopefully. <laughs> it's a time paradox. Time paradox. Plot <laughs> twist. I'm older than my parents. Not again. Not again. <laughs> well, it is Comic Con. This would be the time of season to have a time paradox happening. So That's true. I'll support it. This is really Comic Con 2020. You didn't know it. Yeah. Well. Did they do things virtually for Comic Con 2020? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. That was all. It was all blur. I think it got, Can I? Let me ask you. Were you doing comedy in 2020? Or let me start. Actually, yeah. like, that when is, did you start? This is your, going on year six. Okay. But I, I wasn't able to do comedy you know, during lockdown. Yeah. Were you participating in any, like, I know there were, like, virtual open mics on, like, Zoom and stuff. I watched one, and I'm like, this this is not, this is sad. I went mm-hmm. to a couple parking lot mics, which was better, mm-hmm. uh, but still not the same. And then I, I, I couldn't, all the times that it was doing that, I was, like, in the kitchen at the theater at the madhouse, mm-hmm. helping to save, you know. Save the save business. The business. Yeah. Yeah. That like, is. Yeah, the 
people got extra money and they're trapped in their homes mm-hmm. and they're ordering food online. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, at least you guys were able to do that yeah. business wise. Um, I mean, yeah, we did lose a lot of businesses and comedies. Uh, comedy is expensive. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. One of the goals of the podcast is to encourage people to go see live comedy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And especially, like, I know it's not L.A. where, like, you know, you can find any form of entertainment during the week. It's a little, like... But I, I do feel it's building. There's so many people here in the community are trying to... Like, this podcast and everything anyone's done has been doing. Um, you know, we're trying to get up to that L.A. standard. Like, right now, everyone... Um, to go ahead. point, mm-hmm. I would think, I, I, to, I wouldn't want That is true. I do appreciate that. Um, even, you know, buying a drink. Something. But, like, yeah, I, there, I know in oh, L.A. Yeah, yeah. Five dollars for five minutes. Mm-hmm. And, okay, that's yeah. it. Oh, now you also if you yeah. want something to drink, it's extra or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the pay to play is kind of stinky. Um, especially because, like, you as the, con- you know, well, it's a, but it's also, like, you're investing in yourself. If you're willing to pay for these things and, like... I don't know. Maybe they should screen the people before. Maybe you should get a refund if nobody, if you totally bomb, you should get a refund of your $5 that you gave for the open mic. No? No. You think it should be the other way? Yeah. If you kill, then you get. You get your money back. You get your money back. Yeah, that one makes more sense. See? Again, I see the good in people. So if I see someone fail, I want to help the failure by giving them back their money. Try again. There's no incentive. Okay. No, the incentive to get your money back. That's the incentive and to stay in business. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. I get it. Yeah. But uh, I would love to get to that caliber of, you know, people, maybe people from L.A. coming to San Diego for comedy shows. Right. Um, Well, I mean, what would be nice is for for L.A. to be so big mm -hmm. that audience members, you know, will pay to go to an open mic. Mm -hmm. So now they're paying a cover charge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So why make the performers pay when the yeah. audience could pay? Yeah, that is... That's a fair point. Hmm. Because, yeah. I mean, I... I well, with the... Like, okay, so let's just... I go... To be fair, I mm-hmm. go to, to LA and I pay for the places that you have to pay for. Yeah. Because it's stage time and it's yeah. worth it. Mm-hmm. And you know, you get to perform, do your jokes that, you know, a, a pretzel joke. Everybody here is. is I love so, that. That. Well, you have been you've been away for a while. I people have. Are, uh, people are tired of me doing it for years. <laughs> you know, so. I was, that was the first time I had heard it. Um, maybe I hadn't heard it another open. Mind. I don't know. I enjoyed it. I thought that was just straight up. I'm trying to think of some but twists and. <laughs> It was it was not just one nugget. It was not just one bite of pretzel. That was, that was rough. I'll work on that. Thank you. Uh, so do you have like a, a good booking story or like you were booked on like a anything com- comedy? Um. Life? Well, um. Book that was on. Um, Jennifer Mason does a show over at Finest City Improv called Sofa King Funny. Um, and that was kind of with the same classmates that we all took the class together. And that was my first paid show. Um, well, no, no air quotes. I was, I was actually paid, oh. paid all 12, 12 dollars. I have the Ven- I took a screenshot of the Venmo transaction. Cause I was just like, I got paid to do this. And it felt very, um, rewarding just because of all the time we had like the class and myself spent doing the open mics writing uh workshopping different things i would say that that show was i think it was also like my first show so i was just very connected to it and having friends in the audience that were finally able to see um the joke um and then unfortunately my family was out of town um, but I sent them the recording of my show and I actually, I still have the voicemail. So that show was about a year ago and I still have the voicemail from my sister 
who probably for the first 20 seconds didn't say anything because she was laughing, still laughing at my set. She is my, my sister's my biggest supporter and like nice. I could really just bomb something and she'll probably still laugh. But it's very reassuring to hear in the audience of just like, at least you're here. Yeah. <laughs> I know she's, and it's a very like discernible laugh too. So I'm always just like, when I can hear her laughing, I know it's okay. So I've, I've kept that voicemail. Um, Cause it gives me that kind of, that reminder of like, this is why we're doing it. Um, yeah. And then for like everything, in that set it's all about family stuff and of course she's been around for it so she she knows kind of the situations i'm talking about so i think for her i mean she thinks it's even funnier um because she knows you know who these people are and yeah. like she's like you're right it is about because i even i would ask her be like hey what do you think if i say this like she's like but that you know that doesn't make sense you know grandma said this it's like okay what about this yeah yeah, yeah, yeah do that nice. um so yeah, she is. Yeah, I've kept that as my little like reminder. It's a nice little. Uh, I was trying to think. Of it. Eh, memento, virtual, sure. vo vocal memento. <laughs> but yeah, I think that first show, best show, um, and then yeah, just being able to play it for my family, um, and then again keeping that voicemail of just her laughing was. It's the best thing I could ask for. That's cool. Uh, so, would you ever like try to be on Kill Tony or something like that? What is Kill Tony? Oh, okay. Uh, it's a very popular podcast where uh, you go through like a whole bunch of. It's, it's in Austin right now, um, mostly. But you go up. There's a bucket. You draw names and go up and do a minute, and then the panel. I'm gonna write this to you, and, oh. you know, and and talks about your life and comedy. Yeah, you know, it's it's more of a, a little bit of a roast. But it's all good fun. Yeah, um, I'm gonna write that down because uh, that sounds very intriguing. Um, and as someone who has been verbally assaulted for clown, like yeah, I'm like, yeah, oh, that's nothing. Do, I got, I could, I could deal with that. Great in the interview. Yeah. You know, shoot back. You know, I, I, I like to think it's normal talking. I don't like to think it's because I do comedy, but thank you. Um, you said it was Kill Tony? Yeah. Okay, and it's a podcast. Yeah, uh, the best mm -hmm. thing to do is watch the, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, I got some homework to do tonight. We're going to... Um, just don't watch all of it. Well, no, <laughs> no. We're... Just ask people that you know, too, yeah. like if you've ever been on Kill Tony. Yeah. I've n I didn't even know... how. Long, do you know how long he's been doing that podcast? Back when I was on it, right before lockdown, it already had been years of very popular. Oh wow! So, it's been, how was your experience with it? Um, it was great. They, they uh, this is right before they were doing it at the time um, out of L.A. Mm -hmm. The comp, L.A. you know the Hollywood Comedy Store. Yes. And um, it was on a Monday, and you would go and, and put your name on two lists: mm -hmm. Kill Tony and the the Potluck Bucket. Hmm. And then, uh, you know, if you got, but the kill Tony, you they would draw it, uh, you know, out of the bucket, mm -hmm. the, the, the potluck you would know right away. Mm -hmm. So you, it worked out good. So you would not have to be at two places at the same time. Right. You know, if you, if you got on the potluck, you're all oh, great. Now I have a guaranteed spot, you know, yeah. and then, um, and, uh, I don't know how they handled it. <laughs> because you know, yeah. Joe Tony was drawing out of the bucket. Mm -hmm. um, so, but they were, would, they would come up, you know, to the uh, comedy store of La Jolla. Mm -hmm. um, so they did two shows uh, right before lockdown, and um, I got on the first show. Yeah, it was it was uh, you know, fourteen months in. Mm -hmm. and, uh, did my best one minute mm -hmm. I got the cup you know, the laughs and stuff and then had a great interview yeah that's good okay so you had a positive yeah, positive and then experience like Rudy out here that was his first time he ever did comedy he oh wow on, um, he went on after, after me mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, so. See, that's something. That's that's my next, 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 like, to get on that. Again, I, I don't know why you I probably, have. You probably, you know, just, you know, if you want to try, say that you're in Austin, yeah. Texas or something. Yeah, go and, find it. Oh, you know, it's a Monday. Mm-hmm. And if you do, let's go try to get on Kill Tony. Yeah. No, I mean, that we'll sounds. Go, you know, you can also go go to the show and mm-hmm. watch it. Yeah. Which is probably be a better experience than just sitting across the street in a bar. Waiting. With other comics. Yeah. You know, this might be a fun time, but mm-hmm. it's not as good as being in the audience. Yeah. You know? And then they, they pull your name. Yeah. And then um, they have the, the way of knowing who, you know, who is a ticket holder. Mm. And, yeah. Got it. No, I mean, that, shoot. So, you know, you're always looking for feedback from somebody. So, again, it sounds very intimidating, but I would absolutely love to do it. Um, If I'm ever in Austin. Yeah, there's a lot of, you know, uh, comics that that have been on it. Some comics like the show, some people don't. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of comedy fans that like the show. So, you know, if you hear someone talking, you know. Mm -hmm. Or wherever you know it's come. Sometimes it comes up. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, I, I was going to go tell him. This is again first time I've ever heard it was a thing. All right, um, cool. I am cheating a little bit, and I was looking at your notes, and I was like, "Kill Tony." I was like, "Is this is this a murder podcast now?" Yeah, guys. I do. We figure out a way to do like keep trying to think of a way to not do Kill Tony in San Diego, mm-hmm. but like it's like this. Catch Twenty Two. Like, how do I do a show? Have it recorded as a podcast, but be, maybe have people okay with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not, not give away their jokes unless you're like doing from a bucket or doing improv. Yeah. Or not burning material. Yeah. Either that, or or just and maybe have, have like a little a disclaimer. Like yeah. Have a disclaimer. By the way, we're going to record this. Um, right. How do you get people to come? The comments. The comments. Say pretty please. <laughs> Offer them beverages. You'll People. Get, each person will get five dollars. Yeah, and if they flop, you don't get your money back. See, and then we're back at it. This could be how we save the business. If you do really well, you get your money. If you don't, no money. Yeah. See. All right. We got a scheme. Uh, let's see. So, what's the worst thing about comedy right now? <sighs> Late night open mics. Which there aren't, there aren't too many. Um, but I have, you know, I have a job. So it is but one of I, those. Yeah, what? I'm employed outside of being job? a comic. What is job? What is that? Um, so that was one thing I kind of struggled with was just some, like how late they were at night. And then when like you're starting too, no one knows you. So of course you're at, you're at the end of the lineup. Um, and it is, it, it, that can be discouraging if you keep going on, you know, at like one o'clock in the morning. Um, but I feel, I, I do feel some of these open mics aren't that super late. I really loved Madhouse, so I was coming when, even when it was starting at midnight. Yeah. Um, but being a good millennial, I still live at home with my family. Uh, and they hated that because it was just this like, where are you? Well, I'm downtown. Okay, it's, it's one o'clock. Yeah, I'm still waiting to go on, Mom. What do you want me to do? You need to come home. Like, no, no, no. Ten more minutes. I'm going up. Like, two more people. I'll be fine. Um, Your parents are telling you to come home. Yeah. Yes. Yes, she was. That is... uh, (gasps) Puppy! Super distracted. Dougie! Love it. Um, Yeah. So, that I think that would be the worst thing. But, um, other than that... So far, nothing terrible, um, but it is—it's a grind. I think that's—that's that's the other. It's just—it's a grind, and one night you could tell a joke and everyone loves it. Another night you tell the exact same joke and nobody laughs, and it is right. such a toss-up of it's about like finding your audience. Yeah, exactly, and that's your your people that like you expand mm-hmm. to where it's a hundred percent of the audience. There is a dog here. <laughs> Hello, puppy. Okay. You're so happy. I don't know. This is the first. Who's whose dog is it? That's Andre Gonzalez. Okay. Yeah, I'm good with it. Why do you have a cone on your head, buddy? It's a bad boy. It's like a dunce hat. 
No. He's so cute. Can't chew on something. He's so cute. Probably. Probably so has cute. something going on where he can't chew on his body. I will say this dog waited until his owner left to come over and say hi. Yeah, he's very the dog smart. the dog waited. He was he was he's that polite. Like. Understand that he's not here. He doesn't know. Uh so cute. Dogs are smart. Yes, they are. Um, so Oh, so let's, let's do some follow-up questions. So sure. clown. So do you know how to juggle? No. I've tried. I actually I could juggle scarves. Wow. That's a thing. Yeah, you just throw them up in the air. I can do that. You're almost there. I'm almost there. Uh, That's all you gotta do is be able to. You can juggle scarves. I think you just have to figure out the catching part. It's the it, there's something with like the rhythm of how you throw it, and it's yeah. I'm gonna teach you how to juggle. Do you know how to juggle? Yeah. I'd love to learn how to juggle. Okay. That's what we're doing at the next writing set. Is this happening now? Well, I mean, maybe. Took them out of my bag. Sorry, fans. So close. <sighs> Almost taught you how to juggle. I mean, it might take a while. That's okay. I'll... But I could teach you how to juggle. That's okay. So this great. Is, you don't know how to juggle. You don't know how to. You don't know how to ride a unicycle. Oh hell no. Okay. No. What about stilts? I mean, I'll I'll try that. That that looks like fun. I'll try that. I don't. Did you watch the opening ceremonies for the Olympics last night? No, oh, was I supposed to? No, 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 no. You were oh not. My God, uh, I hate it when just... I missed stuff. <laughs> it was just... it live? Uh, probably at like ten a.m. And then they did a rebroadcast at seven thirty p.m. Oh, ten a.m. I was watching kind of funny uh, games daily. That sounds a little better. I was just watching it because. Um, I like I like looking at the things, um, and uh, but they had these people. Oh no, it was Saturday. Sorry, I, I guess I wasn't doing that. Oh, I was yeah. missing it. Oh, you were missing it. Sorry. You're probably doing something better. Uh, but anyway, they had these people on these poles, and they were standing, and then they would like lean super far forward and lean super far back. I know that's not stilt walking, but that one seemed like I don't know the name of it. I'm not a circus person. Um, uh, what is the acrobat? That's the one I wanted. Yeah, so they, they just say circus and then clowns. Or you can come in. You better come in. I'm just going to park my e-bike. Hi, Fran. Hi, how are you? Yeah, where Good, else are you going to park your e-bike? Yeah. What was that? Where else are you going to park it? Uh, at your mom's house. Ooh. <laughs> You're going to go to Santa Rosa? Yeah. Up for an adventure. Hi, Sarah. I don't know if it will. Um... Hi, Marissa. How, How are well, you? Good. How are you? Good. That's a beautiful e bike. So, can we put it over there, though? What, where? Because you're in the. Oh, I'm in the. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. Welcome! Just, uh, just. We have a guest. I'll put it right here. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, that's fine. I, you can be in the shot. I just don't want you to, your bike to be in the shot the whole time. Yeah, that'd be weird. <laughs> anyway, All so... of a sudden, it's, it's like, that's for sound. That's for. Oh, I like the setup. It looks good. Thank I'm you. Have fun. Thank you. You're gonna be on the podcast. I, I was already on the podcast. Yeah. You're gonna be on it again. Are you doing repeats? Yeah. Uh, it could be like life update. He can watch. You you guys can like listen to it, and then you can see like where are so, they now. I want everybody to understand. Uh, this is uh, episode like 48. Oh wow. So you can understand why. Yeah. I would forget. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh uh, yeah, that's like great. Okay. Oh, bye. 48. Bye. Bye. Good. She let the dog out. Who let the dog out? <laughs> who? 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 Who let the dog out? Not her. She did not let the dog out. That's good. That's good. Uh, let's see. Clown. That was uh, one follow up. Can't juggle. Can't do acrobats. What else? And then have you ever done improv versus stand up? Um, I have actually, so there's another improv theater in San Diego called Mocking, Mockingbird Improv, okay. um, and they do an improv versus stand-up show, and I have participated in that in the stand-up part. Um, I would like to, I would love to do a show where then I just get to be part of the improv as well, because I think that would be fun, well, fun for me. Sure. Um, I know, I would, like, Yeah. That is my only. I want, I want more of those shows to have. I think they're just so fun, and it's the easiest way 
for an improviser to pull material is just seeing kind of whatever gets the laughs. Um, I actually have a couple photos on my Instagram, or not photos, videos, reels, um, from that show that I did where I showed like, this is the bit that I talked about and then um, kind of cut to the other part where the improvisers were doing their thing. And I was able to like, here's what I talked about and here's what they came up with. Um, so it was fun to see kind of what they found interesting or funny in my stories or in my jokes. And then also for me, like, what can I do to punch this up? Because they, you know, they found this thing really interesting. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. It's a fun show. Um, what was her name? Paola Diaz. You should talk to her and try to go on if you have any interest in it. Yeah, I think I did it's it great. once at the Comedy Palace. Mm. Um, when, you know, Mike Trotman used to be at the Comedy Palace. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what about would you ever do stand up with another person on stage? Sure. Oh, in like another comedian person? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know they had down in at Border X Brewing, it's probably about a year ago, they kind of did something similar where they had two two comics, one hat. Right. So we had, we were pulling topics from the hat and then it was just two people kind of riffing. I would at that point treat it like a podcast yeah. um, and just let my intrusive thoughts win. Um, and hopefully that's funny enough for people. Yeah. But that's always, I don't know, like, why not? I mean, they do it on SNL for Weekend Update, you know, right there. It's writing jokes and doing that. So yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, um, wow, what is the word? I don't mind sharing the spotlight. If that was the point of your question of am I, am I self-centered and only want me on stage? No, it's more about, you know, like. Collaborative. Yeah, you're doing improv, you're doing comedy, mm -hmm. you're doing clowns, you know, these, only one of them is by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, there could be multiple, it's, yeah, I do get it. I will say, uh, for me, stand-up is lonely, because it is by yourself, but it also is feeding your ego of like, yeah, doing this by myself. Um, but there is something to performing improv or doing clown with other people because again it's you know we all want human interaction we all want human connection so to be able to do something with someone that makes everyone laugh is just as good as someone yourself telling a joke and having those yeah. people laugh too that's cool mm -hmm. nice um so i'm taking that you don't have merch yet right no not yet no 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 that's fine you don't have to have merch. I do like your shot glasses, though. I still use it. Oh, thanks. It's a very fun. I cannot think for the life of me what's on there. It's the vitamin D. Yes. Yes. I love it. It's a great conversation starter, too. Yeah. I pull that out for people, and they're just like, what? Why? Why? I'm like, no! Aaron's great! You gotta just, like, just just drink it. It's like... Drink your vitamin D. <laughs> drink your vitamin D. <laughs> D for... There's not an alcohol... Is there an alcohol that starts with the letter D? Not like double dry hop IPA. I'm thinking like... It's like uh, Diprano. Mm. Yeah. Deserono. Deserono, yeah. Just kidding. There's, I don't know if I'd do shots of Deserono, though. I'm going to go with no. I think you put it in something. I hope so. I had a friend in college that would drink Deserono and Dr. Pepper. That was that was their works. drink of choice. I don't know. I'll have to ask if they still drink it, but they really liked it. I just it didn't sound it. It does not sound appetizing to me. So they they could have that. I hope it's. I hope they're well. Yeah. <laughs> and their liver, maybe. Yeah. So I'm drinking uh, soda. I'm drinking I drink soda water now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, occasionally I'll have a soda, but I used to drink a lot of soda. That is. Um, yeah, I do. No, it's like, it tastes like syrup. I drink too much of it. Yeah, Ugh. I love I love me my soda water. I have a soda stream at home. Love it. I like to I think it's saving me money. It's like I, it, you don't like it. I didn't like the way it, it was. Was it not making it fizzy enough? Was it? Was it? I couldn't get it to work. Huh? I don't know where I did. I don't know where it is now. Hmm. That's unfortunate. I actually just bought on Amazon. 
it was like a single serve soda water and uses those similar to those whipped cream cartridges that people do for whippets but um you make soda water with it and i love it because i feel so fancy because it just like <sighs> soda water it's great i love it's better than the other one um i like this one that i bought uh because it is portable Whereas the soda stream, you know, it's a whole thing, and then you would just carry the bottle around with the already fizzed water. And then at least with this portable one, I could just fizz it on demand. I know, it's very particular. Uh, no, um, I like it. That's, I might get that, but right now, like, um, I have access to something that's fizzing the water for me. Oh, good. So, that's good. That although, sounds very how, vague how and how very cool. suspicious. It's a soda fountain okay. that you just push soda. Oh, yeah. Okay. It that's, that's soda. It's not as good as like Topo Chico. Oh, Topo Chico. That's, that's the best. Love. Topo Chico is violently, violently carbonated, but I love it. Um, it's also mineral water. Mm -hmm. A couple times I've been to Mexico and, you know, they have Topo Chico. Um, and almost every time we've gone somewhere and the waiter goes to open the Topo Chico, Almost always, it overflows and explodes, and they. All, I always feel so bad, but like, I, I know it's gonna be that violent. But if like, it's just like, oh man, it happens to everyone, buddy. It's okay. <laughs> it's not the first time. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's not you. Um, so yeah, I love yeah. Topo Chico would be that's the runner up if I'm too lazy to fizz my own water, um, and. I'm really concerned about your soda stream. I'm not concerned, but like very bummed that you haven't had a good experience with soda stream. I, I tried a couple times, I didn't get to work, and then I either got rid of it or misplaced it. I don't Did you know. get the fancy one that like plugs into the wall? No. Oh, you got like the basic one. Yeah. That like you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the Terra. I think that's the one I have. I know that one. I like kind of hit the button a few times because I want Topo Chico level carbonated water. Um, and then I also have the smaller bottles versus there's like the big almost like liter size bottle and then there's the little tiny bottle. I like the tiny bottle, you know, it's, that's a science thing. Less volume, more bubbles. Because if you had the bigger one then you'd have to use even more CO2. More science. I don't use science in my regular job, so that's as much science as I'm gonna go right now. All right, that's good. <laughs> I guess it just depends on how much pressure they put into the bottle. There's only so much they could pressurize it, and then the bottle will explode. Well, yeah, right? yeah. Are we talking about Topo Chico or, or Soda or Stream? The soda Stream, the, the CO2 can canister itself. Yeah. That's or are you talking true. about the I was just talking about the whole the, carbonation. The thing that carbonates the water, how big that is. Yeah, like the bottle size. Ah. So Soda Stream, they have bottles kind of closer to this size, uh -huh. like Soda Stream specific bottles, and then they have little tiny ones, probably like this. Yeah, maybe a little smaller than this. And I like the smaller ones because the water gets more carbonated. Oh, okay. Because you push it and it does it mm -hmm. a set amount. Yes, depending on how long you hold down, like pumping gas. The longer you hold your gas thing, the more gas goes into the car. Right. Makes sense. Until, the, until it's full. Yes. Also, we're not science people, so anybody that is science and is listening to this, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all I'm my science teachers. I'm science. I'm a scientist. Oh, yeah. I don't study that. Mm-mm. So, do you have anything that you want to ask me or talk about? Um, we talked about your comedy thing. We talked about the death thing. Death, Jimmy Death, Death by Jim. Nope, kill Tony. We're getting there. Um, I love the goal of the podcast to try to bring more bodies back into the uh, 
comedy world. I know, well, COVID did a lot of things for arts. I know we're four years since COVID started. Um, but yeah, that's a uh, go support your funny people. We're not well. Um, yeah, that's always. Um, to do any um, like painting or drawing or any other type of art? Uh, no, I, I do stick figures. No art. Um, actually, my dad's a really good painter. Um, he tells me the story that him and my mom tried to take like an art class together, and he was doing really well. And the teacher was like, "Wow, you're so great!" Blah blah blah. And then they get to my mom, who is just not doing as well, and the woman just looks and was like, "You have bold lines." Walks away. It's like, dang, that's this. That's nice. <laughs> um, Things are subjective, right? Yeah, that is true. Um, but even my mom was like, no, it was it was not great. But uh, at least she tried. Um, what was I going to say? Um, uh, if anything, I would say less, um, not necessarily art, art, but music, art. Um, I played trombone since, like, fifth grade. Did in middle school, high school, college. The poor dog wants to go to his bed. And there's a bike in the way and a cone. Go on, buddy. Be free. There you go. <laughs> dog's, dog's going, no, nah, you made you made my job too easy. How <laughs> dare you? There he goes. Good job, buddy. I was surprised that he had his bed, but then he was laying on the floor. <laughs> Puppy. He's like, I want to move my bed yeah. so I can be closer yeah. to you guys. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, musical arts. Um, I played in, I did marching band, high school. did marching band in college. Um, San Diego State. And uh, I dabble every now and then I'll play. You know, playing for as long as I did. Uh, the dog right now is making himself comfortable. Uh-oh. Uh oh, he's in trouble. He's in trouble. <laughs> Bless you. Excuse me. Thank you. Let's see. So, do you have any pets? Yes, I have a dog. His name is Cooper. He's a certified mutt. Uh, like a good millennial, I did doggy DNA test. And I'll show you a picture. This is this is the boy. Oh, very cute. Yes, I talk about him in some of my stand-up, too. Because um, even though he is the family dog, he is my dog when there's problems with him. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole thing. Uh, but yeah, I did the DNA test, and we had thought he was maybe like Lopopsa or Schnauzer, because he has a little longer nose. Um, and it turns out he's like... Almost 50% Chihuahua, almost 50% Shih Tzu, and then it falls down the way, you know, like some other breeds of things. And my favorite part is that he is actually 1% Pitbull. And that is, I just, yeah. Yeah, you might be related to my dog by 1%. 1%. Um, yeah, so he's my little buddy. Um, he is, he just... He is the dog version of a grumpy old man. Think of Carl from Up. Um, he will bark at other... Do like, not aggressive bark. He just barks at other dogs. Loudly. But then, like... Again, he doesn't try to fight them. He just, he just barks at them. Um, a good example is my sister brought her friend's dogs to our house. And those dogs, who are, like, big, beautiful... Um, Golden Golden Doodles. So it was a Golden Doodle bred with a Golden Retriever. So it kind of just looked like a Golden Retriever. That's what I would say. Um, but two of them. And they apparently liked to swim. So they were swimming in our pool and jumping in, catching the ball, having a grand old time. And what's my dog doing? He is barking. He's chasing them around. Not chasing. He's just running around the pool, barking at the dogs. Just like, hey, man, like... What are you doing? And then they get out. The dogs would get out of the pool, and, and my dog, you know, would kind of look at them and be like, "Okay, my job's done." 
and then walk away. Like, again, you wouldn't attack him. Once I got out of the pool, you just kind of look at him and be like, all right, you're chill. And go away. He just, he's, Maybe he's not either going to drown. Drown? I don't know. He just, again, he's very... He's very concerned about what other dogs are doing. Um, our, we have a family friend that has a black lab. Um, and kind of the same thing. Like, the first initial kind of meetups, you know, the dog wanted to hang out with my dog. And my dog Cooper was like, no, no. No, no. This is my space. This is my human. Um, again, never. Not even territorial. It was just this, like, uh, just like, he just wanted to talk. He was just like, this is my space. Because again, he wouldn't he wouldn't try to fight them. He just would bark at them if they got close. And it was never aggressive. I guess that would be territory, but it wasn't aggression based. And then now, when we go see this friend, I mean, barking is a level of aggression. It's low level. Okay, that's true. I'm not a dog psychologist, but I. Well, I mean, I don't yeah. know. It feels like it to me. Yeah. From my perspective, yeah. As a human, yeah. Know a lot about dogs. Well, if, like if a tail's wagging and they're barking. I've been told that's like good barking. Yes. Okay. I guess I should ask about. Yeah. The tail sure tail wags when he barks. Excited. Yeah. So that tells the other dog that. Yeah. It's, but it's still yeah. Half or mm-hmm. excited. Excited. Okay, happy. Cool. But my again my dog or you know when he barks even with tail wagging, uh, just is not a good taste in the other dog's mouth. And now when we bring our dog you know to this friend's house or anywhere. Um, that he's met other dogs they just they coexist which makes me so sad because i want like my dog to socialize i want my dog to play and like have, he's not that old he's seven i think he should be playing you get on all fours and, and play with the dog like you're a dog um no you know the thing where you kind of like you harass you politely harass the dog you know kind of like push him around or like throw your hand throw hands not on them but around them kind of get them all worked up um i've done that uh i also or like a chew toy my dog doesn't do rat. toys he doesn't do he toys doesn't do Mm-mm. he doesn't catch a ball or... no no he never really has um okay. he used to i will say he semi used to so he used to have a sister back in 2017 we adopted him and his sister uh, but his sister passed away in 2020, oh. not from COVID, uh, from a coyote uh, attacking her. Um, anyway, very sad. But like, I think I don't know if it's that like he lost a part of him that night when she died. But like, he just won't. He's not a toy person. He kind of was with his sister, and like they would play together. Um, but now, ever since then, like he's never been interested in toys. He's never like. Doesn't play with other dogs. He does his little Karen and barks at everyone. Um, well, he has his tribe. So he, doesn't... he does have his tribe. He has he has my whole family, and he has a lot of anxiety, um, just like his mama. Um, but uh, um, I was going to say he, you know, dogs are pretty good. They'll sense when something's up, something's happening. So if we're kind of packing up to go somewhere. Um, he knows that when we're trying to leave so then he starts freaking out and he's like he's pretty vocal too starts whining and like trying to like sneak out the front door he won't run away he'll just run outside i was like no dude like get back in here um but he know he knows when we're leaving and like the times where we're packing the guard to like go to my aunt's house where he's coming with us and he's doing all that and it's like bro you're coming with us Settle, settle down. Uh, he's, Just put him in the car first. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Lock the that car. Would yeah, yeah bro, <laughs> Jokes on you, buddy. You could have waited inside in the AC, and now you're stuck in the car. <laughs> Just kidding. Don't put dogs in hot cars. So that's not cool. Well, I was imagining they're leaving at night. That's no, that's not. okay. That's allowed. I'll take that. I feel like you don't really see too many dogs in cars even at night, though. Ever since. People will straight up break car windows for their dogs. Yeah. Or not their dogs, but dogs in general. Right. But yeah, he's my little buddy. We've always been a dog family. I love I love dogs. I like cats too. I'm not I'm not a hater of cat you know, because there are some very passionate dog people mm. that just think cats are wild, but cats are cool. 
If yeah, I were, you have to be careful with cats. You should really um, just uh, get them at like a pet, not, mm -hmm. not, not a bred dog. You know, a, a stray. Get a yep. stray. Uh, a, what do you call it? At a, a pound or something. Mm -hmm. Because cats will just if they don't like you, they'll just they'll let leave. you know. Mm -hmm. They'll just go to another mm -hmm. the neighbors or down the street or whatever, and man, it's like no. You don't own me. You're mine. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's the difference between a cat and a dog. You rescue a dog, dog's going to love you forever no matter what. You rescue a cat, if they decide they don't like your, your aura, your your vibe, they're just... Either they, they leave or, or they're just going to be hiding in the house. And you're like, I hope you're alive. Here's some food and water. Good yeah. luck. Yeah, so, exactly. If I were to have a cat, the cat needs to act like a dog. That is my prerequisite. Um... Like, I also have a theory that there's no really such thing as an inside cat. An inside cat mm -hmm. is a cat that hasn't... It, they might be scared to go outside, but if mm -hmm. they actually get over that fear, they're never going to be an inside cat all by itself. And that's what people, that's what people are afraid of. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I have to ask... I do have some friends that have cats, so I have to ask them if, that, if they believe that their cat is truly an inside cat. Well, and I would, my argument is if, if they say, no, it's like, well, the cat hasn't been outside, outside. long enough. Mm -hmm. that, you know, if it survives outside a day or two and realizes it doesn't have to, you know, be inside all the time. Mm -hmm. Out, outside is dangerous, but it's yeah. way funner. Yeah. Well, there is. I mean, people are dedicated for their cats. They build like little like cat. I don't want to say condo, but like little cat enclosures, or they'll like do something in their backyard to make sure that like sure. yeah, the cat can go outside. That's the other thing too. A cat needs to be stimulated, like with you know toys and stuff. Dogs are just happy. I mean, check out this guy right here. It's just happy to be here for the party. That's it. That's it. All right, so they're letting people in to the comedy show. Showtime! I can't believe it's almost 7.30. Well, it is 7.30. Past 7.30. So, sorry. Oh, uh, how do you find me on social media? Come find me. Um, I have an Instagram. <coughs> sorry. When Aaron's not dying. Um, are you okay? Do you need medical attention? We have a dog here. And an <coughs> e-bike. <coughs> Is this gonna help me? Is this dog? Yeah, look, he's so attentive right now. <coughs> so, I mean, oh, look, 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 he's up. Are you gonna help? Are you gonna help, sir? Sorry, I just have allergies. Oh, no, you're. Are you allergic to the dog? Okay, that's good. Uh, all right, yep, no, come find me. Uh, I have an Instagram, it's at MC Papet Comedy. Last name is spelled P A P E T Papa Alpha Papa Echo Tango. M as in oh no I can do this. Mike. Ah <laughs> Mike, what is it? I'm trying to do the, the military Nico the uh mili okay uh Mike Mike Charlie Papa Alpha Papa Echo Tango comedy. <laughs> yeah because I'm not about to spell all that out. All one word, MC Pavic Comedy. Um, nice. That's that's it. Come find me. Come book me. Be my friend. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to book you too. Let's, Thanks, let's Aaron. Do that after the podcast is over. So say bye, say bye everybody. Bye everybody. This has been comedy. Comedy or, or worse. worse. We did it better. Yay. That was better. That was good. Thanks. Ten out of ten.